Good day, viewers. Welcome to Fraction TV. Keep watching, keep learning. Hey, remember, when it starts, don't touch that dial. Also, please kindly click on the subscription button to stay updated and invite your friends. Welcome to Fraction TV. Keep watching, keep learning. In today's video, I'll be talking about biological biology specimen for 2022 NECO examination. But before I proceed, I would like to introduce myself. I'm Mr. Francis and welcome once again to Friendship TV. Keep watching, keep learning. In today's video, I'll be talking about the specimen required for NECO examination 2022. Specimen A is microscope. And some of the likely questions that can actually be that can actually be asked by the examiner is to identify specimen A. The examiner asks us to identify specimen A. Specimen A happens to be what? Microscope. After identification, they can also ask us to draw and label specimen A. Draw and label specimen A. Now, after drawing and labeling, they can also ask us to list the major part of the world in microscope. Because of that, in this particular video, I'll be concentrating on the major part of the microscope and I'll also be talking about the importance of a microscope. Now, what we'll say, what, what, what's, what's the function of a microscope? A microscope is actually an instrument used for viewing tiny organisms which cannot be seen with the naked eyes. Or a microscope is an instrument used for viewing tiny objects or tiny organisms that cannot be seen with what, the naked eyes. In today's video, I'll be talking about the various parts of the microscope and their function. Number one, I'll be talking about the eyepiece. Now, this place I'm actually touching at the moment is called eyepiece. And what we'll talk about the eyepiece, it is also known as ocular lens. It is used for what? Viewing objects. The eyepiece or the ocular lens is used for viewing what? Objects. Now, without wasting much of our time, I'll be talking about the, se the second part of the microscope. Now, the part, at, the part in which I'm holding presently is called the word arm. The arm is used for what? Holding the word microscope. And apart from holding, the arm is actually connecting the eye lens with the base. The arm is connecting the eye lens with the base together. Now, apart from that, the third part of the microscope I'll actually be talking about in this particular video is the stage. Now, when we we'll talk about the stage, the stage is actually the part of the microscope in which the, the slide or organism in which, in which we want to view is being placed. Now, when you talk about the stage, the stage is actually for placing the organism that wants to be what view. The object that wants to be viewed or the slide that wants to be viewed is always placed on the what, on the slide, now on the on the stage. Now the next part of the microscope I'll be talking about is the stage clip. Now when we talk about the stage clip. This is the stage clip. The stage clip is actually used for what holding the what slide. The stage clip is actually hold, is used for what holding the what the slide. Now the next part of the microscope I'll be talking about is what the illuminating what source. Now every microscope has what an illuminating source that provides a source of light for the object or the slide to be viewed. Now, the next part of the microscope I'll be talking about is the word the base. Now, we will talk about the base. This is where I'm presently holding, currently holding the base. The base is actually for what the balance of the word microscope. The next one I'll be talking about is the adjusting word norms. I'll be talking about the adjusting norms. The adjusting norms is actually used for what adjusting the word the islands. It is used for adjusting the word. The revolving lens and the word eye lens. Now, now the next part, I'll, the next part of the microscope I'll talk about is the word revolving word lens. This is what we call the revolving lens. The revolving lens, revolving, revolving lens. This is what we call the revolving lens. And the revolving lens is used for the magnification of the word the slide. It is used for the word magnification of the word slide. Now, without wasting much of our time, I'll be talking about specimen B quickly. I'll be talking about specimen B quickly. Now, the specimen B is ripe mango fruits. Now, under the ripe mango fruits, these are some of the likely questions that can actually be asked by the examiner. Number one, what type of fruit is specimen B? Now, specimen B happens to be a droop. They can also ask us, why do we classify specimen B to be a droop? 
Now, in subsequent videos, I'll actually be talking about this specimen one after the other, and I'll also be dropping a note. Just kindly ask for your e note in the word on the word comment word sections. Now, the next thing I'll be talking about is specimen C. Now, specimen C is the transverse section of what tomato fruit. Transverse section of what tomato fruit. Now, they can the examiner can actually ask us what type of fruit is tomato. Tomato is actually a berry. They can ask us for the similarities between specimen B and specimen C. Specimen B and specimen C. Both of them are fruits. Both of them contain seed. Both of them they are made up of tiny epicarp. Both of them have succulent mesocarp. Now, those are some of the similarities that exist between what specimen B and what specimen C. When we, are, when we are asked for similarities, now, make sure you use the word both. When, you, when talking about similarities, use the word both. Now, they can also ask for, ask for the differences between specimen B and specimen C. The differences. Now, for specimen B, which is the mangrove fruit, it has only one seed. Why specimen C has numerous seed? Now, we'll be talking about, you can also ask us for the science, the botanical name for specimen B and specimen C. They can also ask us for the life cycle of what specimen B and specimen C. They can also ask us for the mode of propagation of specimen B and specimen C. They can also ask us for the pests and diseases affecting specimen B and that is also affecting what specimen C. They can also ask us for the importance of what specimen B and specimen C. Now, without wasting much of our time, I'll be talking about specimen D. Specimen D is granite seed. Granite seed. They can also ask us for the botanical name for granite. They can ask us for the type of crop. They can ask us for the life cycle. They can ask us for the disease affecting what granite. They can also ask us for the classes of food in which granite belongs to. Now, without wasting much of our time, I'll be talking about specimen E. Specimen E is maize grain. They can ask us what type of crop is maize. They can ask us for the life cycle. They can also ask us for the, the botanical name. They can also ask us for the disease affecting maize. They can also ask us for, for the importance of what or specimen. They can also ask us for the importance of specimen E. What is the importance of maize? Maize is actually a carbohydrate. What is the importance? Energy providing food. They can also ask us to test for what starch or starch test for what starch. Now, when you are testing for starch, you just put your specimen E plus your iodine solution. Blue black coloration will be observed, indicating the what presence of what starch. Now, when you are when you are describing. Number one, you need to create a curriculum for your test. Your test, under your test, you'll be writing specimen E plus iodine solution, under your observation, blue black coloration, and under your inference, starch is what present. Now, the next one I'll be talking about without wasting much of our time is specimen F. Now, when we talk about specimen F, specimen F is actually what carrot. Specimen F, carrot. Specimen G. Irish potato, specimen H, water lily. Now, under specimen I, specimen I is from, they can ask us to classify specimen I into what kingdom is those specimen I belongs to. Specimen I belongs to the kingdom Animalia. They can ask us for the phylum, it belongs to the phylum Anthropoda. They can ask us for the class, it belongs to the class Crustacea. They can also ask us to draw and label specimen I. Now, the next one I'll be talking about is specimen J, which is tilapia fish. They can ask us to draw and label tilapia fish. They can ask us to mesh, they, they can also ask us to describe the, the what to, where is tilapia fish found. It's an aquatic organism. They can ask us to describe the adaptation mechanism of what of tilapia fish. In the next video, I'll be talking about this specimen one after the other. Now, specimen K, third pole. And the last one, specimen L, spider. Please kindly click on the subscription button. Keep learning and keep enjoying this channel.